the current generation of lithium ion batteries, which are based on graphite anodes, liquid electrolytes, and cathode materials such as NMC or LFP, I'll explain what those are in a minute if you're not sure, are generally considered to be the limits of their energy density. However, here are five ways in which those limits are being increased, reaching new performance limits. In fact, new performance limits that will allow us to make electric airliners, as in jet airliners that you go on right now, feasible. And not only feasible, but profitable and an inevitability. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. As you know, if you're a regular, long-time viewer of this channel, there's really two mainstream types of batteries in use today in electric cars and even in energy storage for the most part as well. Those are lithium ternary batteries, which comprise of batteries such as what General Motors use right now in their vehicles. They use lithium, nickel, cobalt and aluminium some of them use manganese some do some don't however that's the general sort of battery chemistry we're seeing in those types of batteries now it's a similar battery chemistry as what's in tesla's 4680 battery cells and it's similar to what's in lg energy solutions the third largest battery company on the earth right now to what they use in their vehicles and you know how that's gone right yeah not quite as good as how it's gone for LFP batteries over the past 12 months. LFP batteries don't use nickel. They don't use cobalt. They don't use manganese. Well, that's about to change. And they don't use aluminium. They're much cheaper. They last a lot longer and they're considerably safer. However, they have a lower energy density. That's the big drawback. And they're heavier. So many people think that Tesla's strategy over the next 10 years will be to use primarily 4680 battery cells in their cars. Well, I'm here to tell you that is wrong. And I'll report on why that is in a video that I'm about to publish very soon. In fact, Tesla's battery strategy is not what most people think at all. And the reason for that is they're blinded by the shiny light. The new shiny object is shining in their face and that's the 4680 battery cell or the 4680 ternary battery cell. However, new developments in battery cell technology are leading Tesla and other companies down a different route. One of those different routes is a shift from graphite to silicon, promising significant improvements in energy density and performance. Silicon anodes offer an exciting alternative to the current graphite anodes used. While silicon material has been used in the anode in small quantities, moving beyond its use as an additive has proved difficult due to its inherent volume expansion and resulting stability and cycle life issues. Cycle life issues are actually the biggest problem with using silicon. However, silicon anode technology has steadily improved over the past 10 to 15 years, allowing cells to use anywhere from 5 to 100% silicon in the anode. Highlighting the continued interest in this technology, developments in 2022 include Nexion raising US $200 million in funding and licensing material to SKC. Amprius's decision to go public, Group 14 Technologies' is US $400 million funding round and the acquisition of Tira Technos by POSCO Holdings. In addition, says Battery News, Amprius delivered 450 watts per kilo commercial cells for use in satellites. Well, the WHOOP 4.0 fitness wearable released in September of 2021 utilizes Sela Nanos silicon anode technology. I talked about that technology in another video and went into detail. I'll put a link in the description to that video about those wearables and the new battery technology being used by Sela. Now, getting back to Amprius and their 450 watts per kilo technology using silicon in the anode. Well, we know 
that to make commercial airliners effective or to make them actually be able to fly efficiently, they need 400 watts per kilo minimum energy density in batteries. Well, seeing as we've now reached 450, at least at this smaller scale, this means that it's only going to be a matter of a few years before we start seeing commercial airliners built with electric motors and batteries. Now combined, these developments point to the maturing of the silicon anode market with the adoption of advanced silicon anode materials in a variety of applications becoming increasingly likely. However, as such, ID Tech EX forecasts considerable growth in the adoption of silicon anode materials, though graphite is still expected to remain the dominant anode through to the 2030s. However, this is only in reference to ternary batteries, not to lithium iron phosphate batteries. There are new methods of cathode synthesis coming to lithium phosphate batteries as well. Those include future lithium ion batteries will use a similar suite of cathode materials that are commercially available. LNMO or lithium nickel manganese oxide batteries are next generation LFP batteries that use a combination of nickel and manganese in the cathode. Now LNMO or the LFP related LMFP are considered exceptions to the new emergence of using silicon in batteries. However, there are of course trade-offs to the different battery types. That is between high performance and low cost, weight and number of charging cycles. Lithium manganese rich NMC cathodes could provide a modest increase in energy density, but commercial development of these is limited and slow. Improvements to cathode materials are generally going to be incremental. Instead, the larger shift in cathode technology and innovation will stem more than likely from how they are actually synthesized. Current synthesis techniques require high temperatures over relatively long periods of time, whilst also using high volumes of reagent and water, leading to high manufacturing costs and environmental impact. If you recall, one of the key reasons why Tesla purchased the battery company Maxwell Technologies was for their ability to dry coat batteries and save on this manufacturing time. Nano One Materials and 6K Energy are two companies aiming to commercialize new ways of synthesizing cathode materials. Nano One Materials utilizes a solution-based one-pot method to produce coated cathode materials. The company has a partnership with cathode manufacturer Pew Lead and entered into a development agreement with BASF earlier in 2022. 6K Energy utilizes a microwave plasma reactor to produce their cathode materials though they are also able to synthesize silicon anodes and solid electrolyte materials as well. 6K Inc. closed US $120 million in a Series D funding round in May 2022 and has also entered development agreements with lithium producer Albemarle and fellow cathode startup Our Next Energy. Both Nanoa Materials and 6K Energy are promising streamlined production, processes for improved throughputs yields and lower manufacturing costs, as well as reduced environmental impact, which is getting pretty important these days. Solid electrolytes and new electrolyte formulations are also key to next generation battery technologies. For example, NEO's ES7 will have a semi-solid state battery being delivered to customers in their electric cars by the end of this year. Now that battery should theoretically give their vehicles approximately a 1,000 kilometer range. So while solid electrolytes capture much of the attention regarding electrolyte technology, the use of new additives and electrolyte formulations can offer continued incremental improvements to liquid electrolyte systems. For example, New Dominion Enterprises are developing electrolyte additives and solvents based on phosphorescenes and phosphorus nitrogen compounds to help improve safety and improve performance. Specifically, their electrolyte additive materials can improve thermal stability, reduce vapor pressure, and improve SEI formation. Long term, the company is aiming to completely replace the conventionally used organic solvent with their electrolyte system, 
with potentially significant improvements in safety. Nevertheless, the holy grail of battery technology for many EV manufacturers remains the solid state battery, which can offer significant improvements to safety by replacing the flammable liquid electrolyte currently used with a solid electrolyte, which is nowhere near as fire prone. In addition, solid electrolytes can also offer the potential to using lithium metal anodes, which could push energy densities beyond 1000 watts per liter, meaning battery sizes could be decreased by about 70%. And electric vehicles using these batteries could still achieve similar ranges to current electric cars today. That's a huge difference. The solid state market is expected to grow to over US 8 billion by 2031, with liquid electrolytes remaining an important part of the market, primarily in my view, through lithium iron phosphate batteries, which will still hang around. Challenges regarding the stability, cycle life, manufacturability, and even safety of solid electrolyte systems mean the race continues between a number of different electrolyte systems. Next, we've got space efficient battery packs. This is an area where CATL and Tesla have been working very, very hard to utilize new technologies and so have BYD with their blade battery. For electric vehicles in particular, the design of the battery pack offers another key route to enhance performance. Many automotive companies have announced batteries with cell to pack designs to eliminate materials associated with module housings and optimize packing efficiency ultimately helping to improve energy density and improve battery integration into the vehicle. Once Tesla announced their structural battery pack, really the floodgates opened and a number of different Chinese manufacturers announced they were doing similar things. BYD's structural pack came out very quickly soon after. Volvo and Zika and Geely announced they were working on structural battery packs and so did a number of other electric vehicle manufacturers, including NEO. BYD advertised the possibility of improving volume utilization from their current 40% to 60%, while battery manufacturer CATL announced that their latest self to pack design achieves a 72% volume utilization. This volume utilization is really what's key to the significantly improved energy densities of CATL's latest generation battery packs. Earlier in 2022, CATL announced their LFP packs could reach 160 watts per kilo and 290 watts per liter, which starts to be competitive with their nickel manganese cobalt counterparts or their lithium ternary opposition. Maximizing energy density can help to mitigate the primary disadvantage of cheaper LFP cells, offering a route to cheaper long range batteries. These types of battery designs do come with the downside of reduced serviceability, which may limit their use in commercial vehicles. You can see that from Sandy Munro's latest taking apart Tesla's structural battery pack. They're glued together. It's not easy if there's a problem in the packs to actually find that problem, fix it, and then get that pack back into operation. And it's more likely the packs will be scrapped and recycled if there's even just a few cells that are no longer working. One other area that's key Improvements to battery management systems, or BMS as they're called in the industry, can provide a route to improving multiple aspects of battery performance without the challenges associated with materials development. For example, QNovo highlight how their BMS software and analytics can help simultaneously improve safety, cycle life, and charge time and increase the usable capacity of a battery. And that's one of the key advantages that Tesla has right now over its competition. Its battery management software systems are more advanced than its competition. This enables Tesla to have packs that are more efficient, that handle heat better, and that generally last even longer, especially in comparison to their previous packs in the Model S and the Model X. Now, QNovo achieves this increased performance in their BMS systems through a combination of battery use data and cell impedance measurements that inform physical models of lithium ion cells, which in turn are used to optimize operation and charging protocols. Basically, the biggest enemy to a lithium ion battery is heat. The second biggest enemy is cold. Being able to operate at ideal temperatures using a battery management system is key 
to extending the life of batteries. An additional use case for the BMS solution could stem from battery default detection, something which could be highly valuable in light of recent electric car recalls, such as the many recalls from LG Chem battery packs that have gone into cars such as the Chevy Bolt and the Bolt EUV. Away from EVs, improved BMS or battery management systems will be highly valuable to other end users, uses such as aeroplanes, boats, jet skis, smartphones, and even power tools as well. Now the one to 100% charge in 19 minutes advertised by the OnePlus 10T is partly enabled by more intelligent charging algorithms, as well as more efficient thermal management. Thermal management, as I'm sure you know, is absolutely key to the life of a battery. And improving your thermal management system is one of the key reasons why Tesla's new battery packs, when I say new, I'm talking about their older technology, the 2170 cells that have gone into Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys, mean that Tesla vehicles are able to lose only very, very small amounts of battery capacity, even after hundreds of thousands of miles because of their improved thermal management. Now, as well as this new, improved, fast charging capability in not only mobile phones, but also electric cars, OnePlus advertises a cycle life of 1,600 cycles. That's well beyond the typical life advertised for LCO and consumer electronics batteries. While cell developments often include trade-offs between the key performance characteristics of energy density, cycle life, fast charging, and safety, improvements to the BMS can feasibly offer improvements to every single one of those areas of battery performance. Ultimately, there are numerous routes to improve battery performance and cost, including various others that I haven't even gone into here. Some of these new developments offer incremental benefits. However, if you combine all these little incremental benefits and put them together, they contribute to one big thing, consistent improvement in energy density, safety, and longevity of lithium-ion batteries. People don't actually realize this, but lithium batteries are improving significantly every single year. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree, you disagree, or if you've heard of any new battery technologies that you think we should talk about. Have a great day. Bye-bye.